12 and have, you know, have him come down and go to 4, have him go out and have him go there uh, to number 2. So there's a, again, let your imagination go and there's a ton of ways you can run this thing. Another thing I think is interesting is where do you put this back? What if you want, what if you don't, if you want to run a one back offense and you don't want him in the count, okay? Or you could leave him here and you want to not have him be involved. You want him to run another path. So what we would do is we would run a sweep 12. He has number one, he has number two. And then we could have him run a dive or an option or he could run anything else. He doesn't have to be involved in the count. Now you're hoping that, of course, that this guy hangs in there with him and you've got him blocked, him blocked, and then that guy's got to make the play. Okay? So we think it's very important that you understand that what we want to do on the perimeter is get as many people out there as you have. Okay? If, you, if this guy, you know, if right now our sweeper and these two guys equal three and their free safety and one and two equals three, we think we win. Okay, it's an offense where we aren't trying to block everybody, where we're trying to make people play in space. We're going to try to make that free safety make an open field tackle. So that's the basics of our green light sweep. Again, nothing would change. If you change the numbering system, nothing changes with your offensive line. The next sweep we'll talk about is the yellow light sweep. For us, a yellow light sweep is we're going to read the uh, action of the defense. Uh, we're going to isolate a player and read his reaction and go off of it. Um, I think in this offense, of all the plays, this is the one that is the most expensive time-wise. Um, I think it's certain defenses we don't ever run it against. Um, I'll show you what we like to run it against best. And there's many teams that have put it in um, and taken it out because they've had more success with the red or the green. Or perhaps they just didn't want to take the time to teach it. The benefit of the yellow light sweep, in my opinion, is you're never wrong. Uh, if you do it right, you, um, you always have a chance to gain yardage, and uh, whatever the defender does, theoretically, you should be wrong. So let me talk a little bit about the yellow light sweep. When we draw the yellow light sweep up, we'll just do it against this edge with a tight end or with just uh, two wide receivers. The lead back is the read guy, and he's the one that's reading the tight end's butt. We are having the tight end step to reach, and he is trying to reach uh, the nine technique. We really prefer this against a nine technique. It is a much better play when you have somebody on the outside edge of that defensive, um, a defensive end type person in a nine technique. Uh, sometimes if we get uh, a team that does not like to give us that look, we'll split the guy, and then that way we get the outside back or head up on the slot, and then we go ahead and have the slot reach for the, um, to try to go ahead and reach the guy to go outside. The technique that we use with the running back, it's actually a little saying we have, if, you, if um, when in doubt, take it out. Meaning if you're not sure of the read, keep going outside, because maybe at the last second, the uh, tight end or slot will turn their butt, and we can cut it up, and um, we'll be fine. The other thing we say is if you see the butt, cut it up. And so as um, we'll show you on film and as we show you in drills, as we see the uh, butt of the uh, defense or the tight end, our guy, if he can't reach him after two steps, we tell him to take him the way he wants to go because he's running towards the sideline and we're going to go inside of that. We find that there's a, a natural gap there. The problem technique for us is the five technique. And so the five technique becomes a real issue. And what we have to do is stop his feet. And, if, you know, on all sweeps, the five technique, uh, <clears throat> and the green and the yellow, the five technique is the problem technique. You need to get him to stop his feet. Uh, our base way of doing it is for everybody to try to track around him. If he gets on the track of the guard, we're going to cut him, uh, which is legal in high school and college. Uh, if he stays flat to line of scrimmage, the guard and tackle can take him to the linebacker. That's our base way of blocking the yellow light sweep uh, with there as a five technique and a nine technique. Um, <clears throat> again, it's an expensive play as far as time's concerned. It does take some repetition and practice, and the good, po the good part of the play is that, um, you, again, you're always right, and it gives you an opportunity to, um, to make a big play just about any time.
We're going to talk now about what we call our red light sweep. And red light means we're going to stop, cut it up. We actually don't physically stop our sweeper, but we want him thinking in his mind that, hey, I've got to make a cut, and I've got to, um, I know where the cut is, and I, don't, I want to cut off my outside foot. I don't want to slip on the cut, and I want to make sure that, um, that we know where we're attacking. The, um, the beauty of the play is that against certain defenses, we used to just always go outside for years. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. And we thought, um, and when we looked at the times it didn't, we realized that teams were in a different look or a t something that was hard for us to reach everybody or we were running techniques that made it very difficult for us to get outside of them. But they would leave a giant gaps. So for example, up here, what we would do on a, on a yellow light, or excuse me, we're on red light sweep. What we would do on a red light sweep is we're gonna try to hit the C gap. So here's the A gap, the B gap, C gap. We're gonna, the C gap's gonna get quite large once the ball's snapped. And so really, you know, we, we added a D and an E gap in our count. And so we add, this is, we would call this the D gap, we call this the E gap. Because we hit, we, it's such a large area. And what we wanna do is we wanna create a seam in here, and there's several ways to do it. I mean, you can, I've, I've done it where the tight end blocks down, the tackle blocks out. You can have him block down, him block down, and him pull. I think um, you can have everybody just block out, knowing that they're gonna go outside and we're gonna cut it up. I don't think that, I think you probably have a scheme in your system that's going to allow you to block an off tackle player or, or uh, something where the tight end is. The key point, the key point is that you want to get something where you've got a nice seam right in here and the back is going to take off like it's green light. Third step, he's going to cut it up and then all the same fundamentals are going to take place with the sweeper. Again, usually we tell our guys it's the third step and I'll show you that when we get into the drill part. One of the things that happens if there's no tight end is people are getting a very wide or loose five technique, okay? And what we'll do with, uh, on this, again, it's the same thing. Now, this is the A gap, this is the B gap, this is the C gap, there's be a D gap and an E gap out here. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and try to fight to reach him. If he fights, we go ahead and turn him out. Same thing, lead back, and we take it up that tight. Uh, sometimes we'll call it really red, or our kids will come up with a call that's a little bit tighter than with a, just a tight end. But again, as you'll see on film and as you'll see on the drills, it certainly doesn't change a whole lot. Everybody, again, mentally knows that there is a gun going to be a cut. It's going to be sharp. It's going to be quick. And they know exactly what foot to, uh, they're going to make that cut on. Um, one other thing I want to mention um, is that we have, if, it's, if you're running a two-back offense, it could be split backs. It could be offset I. It really doesn't matter. A lot of people want to know what, is, uh, what does the other back do? And we give our backs paths, as I've mentioned previously, and they pretty much have the freedom to run whatever path it is that you or they want to run. Uh, they're the deceptor. If there's only one back, then I think our quarterback has to become the deceptor. And I think that's a critical part on all these sweeps, red, yellow, and green, is that the backs, the, the other back, the other setback, or the quarterback has to become the deceptor by faking a run, faking pass, faking something, which goes back to our basic philosophy of an unselfish uh, offense where everybody's faking. Another thing about the red light technique, or the red light sweep, is we call the three technique the problem technique. One of the things that we want to stress is that the problem technique to us on a red light sweep is the three technique. We found that he can slide down the line of scrimmage and make the play. Uh, on the green light sweep and the yellow light sweep, we consider the five technique the problem technique. And so for us, we really want to stop their feet. And uh, there's a variety of ways to do it, and your imagination's your only break. But you need to understand that those are the guys that can make the plays. Most of the time, on a red light, we will block the three technique. Most of the time, on a green or yellow, we would not block the three technique. Okay, the first thing we want to talk about is the quarterback footwork on the, on the uh, fly sweep. We call this a fly step. And what uh, Tyler's going to do is we tell the quarterback to look at, at the sweeper 
and then he's going to go ahead and turn his feet 180 degrees around. Now you can hop, you can step, however he feels comfortable. So I'll say fly step to the left, and he'll go ahead and execute that. And he goes ahead and hops, he's a little bit high. It doesn't matter how, if you're high or low, I just tell him be comfortable. Come on back, okay, fly step to the right. And again, his feet are gonna turn 180 degrees as he goes. And he turns ahead and hops. Now he's in position now to what we do, we call a deal the cards. He can deal the cards at that position um, because his back is turned. He's getting enough depth away from the line of scrimmage so the guards can pull. And, um, and I think that's the critical component. One other thing he's doing a, a, a nice job of is, is go ahead and do it to your left again, please, Tyler, is that he's going to drop the ball and catch it every time he takes a snap. That's critical to the timing of the play because it really simulates a center snap. If your quarterback just holds the ball on the fly step, it's not as, it, 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 once you get a center there, it screws up your timing. So we have our quarterbacks always release and catch the ball as they go. Again, please. Next thing we want to do is we want to teach the sweeper and the quarterback to work on the timing. So we want the sweeper to go ahead and we start out just going half speed. And it's really the quarterback's job to time it. All right. So just to get the feel of it, let's go half speed, please. Let's time one. Ready. There go. Very good. To me, it's up to the quarterback to time the sweep. It's his job to make sure that the snap is done on, the, on time. It is not the sweeper's job. The sweepers are to go. Let's go a little bit faster now, Brandon. Ready. Set, go. If the quarterback turns, go ahead, and he's waiting, we call that too early. If he turns and the guy's behind and he has to reach, we call that late. And that's about all the coaching we do with this. We tell our quarterbacks we want you to be 180 degrees turned when the sweeper goes by. And again, with the approach, with, with the approach of the sweeper, again, he's, a yard, he's aiming a yard behind the quarterback. He's gaining speed as he goes. And once he gets there, it's the quarterback's job to time it. So what we want here is an approach and a mesh and a slide step. Approach, mesh, and slide step is what we're working on here. Again, the sweeper is going to work real hard on moving one body width. Go ahead, go, go ahead and move one body width away from the line of scrimmage. Good job. All right, let's go ahead and do it from the side. What you want to look for is a slide step. We want to go ahead and add a couple of components. We want to work the timing. We want to work the approach. We want to work the mesh, the slide step. And now we want to do the catch. The catch, we want him, to, the uh, sweeper, to get his inside arm on the outside hip of the fullback or the lead back. So, Kevin, you're going to run your green light sweep path. You've got to go ahead and run your, your, your green light sweep. And then we're going to go ahead and put somebody in a three technique. And his job at the snap of the ball is to come across and see if he can tag the sweeper. All right, here we go. Very good job. Again, we want to try to get wingtip to wingtip with our sweeper and our lead back. Here we go. And again, as fast as they can get around the corner, touch it, catch. The last step of what we do is what we talked about, set up the block. And again, we had defenders out here. They'd be faking out, cutting up, faking in, going out. So that's really how we teach the timing the catch, the mesh, all those components of the, uh, of the fly sweep. And again, I think that's what's really critical. Again, putting a guy in a three technique makes it very difficult for the uh, sweepers to go slow. It makes them to take the proper slide step, and it's been extremely helpful for us. Okay, on this drill, we call this the mesh drill. This teaches paths, timing, and, um, and makes the guys work on their fakes. We're going to go ahead and get a sweep with the uh, sweeper, the um, number six Q, raise your hand, he's running the belly. Uh, number three Kevin's gonna run the counter, and then our quarterback's gonna work on his bootleg fake. The, the cones are, are they want, we wanna make sure they run to the cones 
because we have, the, we have the ability to get the ball to all those different spots on the field. The key to, the, to this game, this little drill, is they've got to fake me out, uh, the Wiley veteran. And so what they've got to do is they've got to, um, I'll turn my back, the quarterback will go ahead and point to who's supposed to get the ball. I'll turn back and I'll stand on the play side linebacker and their job's to fake me out. Here we go. Ready. Go. Right there. Good job. What we're going to try to do here is have them fake us out. The key thing is the sweep, belly, counter, as fast as you can say it. Sweep, belly, counter, that's as fast as they should run through this drill. Um, any one of the four guys can get the football. And again, this is a drill that we do um, on, on, on a very regular basis, almost daily. When the back's fake, we really want them to what we call rock the baby grab their elbow, keep their eyes up, and look, and when they make a cut, to cut away from where the football's going. Sweeper's gonna put the ball on his hip, or he's gonna fake like he has it on his hip, and go full speed. We'll go ahead and try one from this angle, and then we'll do one from another angle. Okay, here we go. Ready. Say go. Good. Again, the beauty of it is we got people all over the field and the ability to get the football to any of these guys. Let's go ahead and do it from the side view. Ready. Set, go. In this drill, we're going to work on the catch and the, and the idea of being wingtip to wingtip is we come around the corner. Um, Kevin's going to lead us. If I say red light, he's going to go in between the cones. If I say green light, we're going outside. At some point, we'll add a tight end, and then we'll go yellow light. We'll actually read the tight end's block. So for sweep practice, I'll just say green light. Here we go. Catch them, catch them, catch them, catch them. That's what we're looking for, as fast as we can go. Very good. KU. Let's go red light, red light. So now we're going to go in between the cones. Make three, hey, remember, it's three steps and then go, Kevin. All right, here we go. Again, they know they're making the cut. They make it fast. They make it sharp. That was a good job, fellas. Okay, let's go red light again. Ready. Again, your coaching point, try to keep them as close together as possible. Close together as possible. The next drill we're going to do is we're going to introduce the yellow light concept or the idea of reading the tight end. In this drill, uh, Jacob's going to go ahead and step to uh, reach. If he can reach him, we're going to go outside. If he can't, the fullback is going to see his butt. He's going to cut it up. What we're going to work on with the sweeper is simply he knows it's yellow light, so he's not sure if he's going to go outside or inside, so it's more of a mental thing. We don't want him to run so fast that he can't make the cut. The mistake that we get is guys go too fast and we cut it up and there's a huge gap between the lead back and the sweeper. The other thing we want to work on, quarterback's always working on timing, but he's going to, we're going to fake out, use different fakes, different inside run paths of ours, and, um, and the quarterback's going to fake something and then he's going to fake either a play action pass or he could run the ball. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, cue, raise your hand, and the quarterback are going to work on their fakes and paths. Everybody else is going to work on yellow light sweep. Okay, here we go. Good job. Come on back. As they come back, as it was obvious that when Jacob went to reach, the defensive end slid outside. Kevin saw the butt cut it up, and we had to fake. Let's do it again. This time I'd like, let's go uh, option fake. Speed up. Yeah. 
Here we get a reach block. As a result of the reach block, we're outside. We have a fake going the other way. They can, we pretty much give our guys the freedom to fake whatever they want. We kind of game plan it from week to week, opponent to opponent. Okay, one more time. Good job. So again, see the butt, cut it up, different fakes, different paths. They can practice as they're um, going through this drill. We're going to get play action pass fake. That's excellent. Watch the wall. Okay, we're going to start talking now about green light sweep. In, uh, in this drill, we, we don't need to have the offensive line. We're splitting our tight end, or it could be a wide receiver. We're going to an edge where there's just one wide receiver. We have a very simple numbering system. The corner is number one. The force player is number two. Then the inside backer, that cone, would be number three. And the free safety would be number four. And so in this case, we want to go sweep 21, which means he gets the first digit, two, and he gets the second digit, one. We know it's a green light sweep. If number 12 comes up with motion and hits it, then it would automatically become a sweep 12, meaning our, our receiver would go get number one and he would have to block number two. And that's really the only thing they can do to get us out of this blocking scheme. Okay, it's a green light sweep. Here we go. 21. And then on this drill, you can see our, our sweeper is going to go ahead and try to set up the block. Okay, make the corner go out and cut it up. Have them cut up, corner reacts, break it outside. We call that have a plan, set up the block, very important. Let's try it again, sweep 21. This time hit it, Greg. That's a good, and again, good athlete like Brandon, in, out, out, in. We tell him to be squirrely. We tell him to be like an old 57 Chevy, real light in the ass and moving, it's squirrely around the corner. They got to have a great feel for this. And again, drills like this just get us in practice over and over again. One more time, your choice, Greg. Move in a little bit, Q. Sweep 21. Okay, freeze. If you can zoom in here on the tight end, we really talk about getting to triangles. And he's on the, a triangle is that armpit. That's in perfect position. If this guy, the defender, wants to go inside, we win. If he tries to go around it, if we have good feet, we got a chance to really seal that guy off. So we tell him, we tell our receivers to get to that triangle on the upfield armpit. He was in perfect position because of neuromuscular patterning and months and months of practice. All right, the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and add another blocker to the mix. So now he'll get the first digit, he'll get the second digit, and he'll get the third digit. With the corner being number one, force player, outside backer being number two, uh, the cone still number three, it's a good matchup for us, and then the free safety being number four. And again, again most teams are gonna rotate in some fashion, and so our, our players have to, to, um, have to learn how to uh, handle that. A good way for us to teach this is I'll just call out a blocking scheme. So for example, I'll say 142 and then have everybody point to where they're going. Go ahead, fellas, point. So he's got one, four, two, let's go, 221. We're both pointing at number two. He's got number one. Let's go ahead and go um, four, one, two. Everybody point where they're going. And, um, and again, however many three-digit change-ups you can come up with, you can do. I don't know if they all work in a real game, but uh, we could try it. Our base way is we're going to go 221, all right? His job is to make sure that this guy does not get upfield, and his job is to make sure he does not move sideways, okay? We want to work the catch drill, slide step, catch drill, and then set up the block out here, all right? Here we go. 
Stop, stop, stop. Good. Freeze. What we want to do is that right now number four is free, and we're saying that our guy is a better athlete than number four is. <laughs> so although he just stumbled there. We, we like this matchup, all right? If number four becomes a problem, if he gets up to closer line of scrimmage, then we may add him to the count. But that's, that would be our base way of doing it, day one rules, and uh, see how far this guy, the further he gets over, obviously the more problems they have backside for, the, for inside run or for play action pass. And so that's kind of the, the, the thought pattern behind it. Here we go, let's try it again. All right, let's go, let's try, let's do a different one. Let's go 142. Different, different blocking scheme. I have a point, go ahead and point. And let's run it, here we go. You did it. Okay. <laughs> Stayed upright. Good job. So we call this the perimeter drill. We'll start out doing it about this speed. We'll bring our defense over uh, and, and, and go live. Uh, we can go half line drills. But this is the type of thing that we, we, we want to do. Now the other thing we might do, we may say we don't want the back in the blocking scheme. So let's go ahead and go sweep 12 counter. OK, so we're going to change. Uh, our running back's path and um, go dash. Here we go. And again, for team, it's another way to get around the corner using the count system. Okay, the next drill we'll do is we'll set a tight end and a tackle. We'll go ahead and cross block on a seven technique and a loose nine. Inside backer, if he comes over, will get blocked by our lead back. Okay, we're doing this out of a one back formation because we're out of guys. Here we go. This will be a red light sweep, cross block with the tight end and tackle. Again. Good wingtip to wingtip. There's the cut right there. <laughs> Good job. In this film, we're going to go ahead and offset our back. And uh, again, the team rotates. And we're going to block this 124, where we're going to man block everybody on the perimeter. And you can see we get a nice seal. Receivers do a nice job of staying with their blocks. And the, and the back, knowing it's a green light sweep, is going to go ahead and take off, get on the outside hip, good position. Once he makes his cut, there's really nobody left to make the play. It is green light sweep 21. So as you can see, we're going to have our wide receiver block number two, and we're going to get our back out on number one. We're going to end up being one on one, we hope, with the free safety, or the guy that's actually running. We, we call the runner uh, number three. When he, the guy runs, he becomes number three in our counting system. One of the key things on this play is to stop the feet of the five technique. Here we try to cut block the guy. We get his feet tied up just enough that we're able to get around the corner. And again, very good position by our sweeper, outside hip. And again, he ends up getting a real nice gain. So that would be sweep 21, or green light sweep. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna run our yellow light sweep. Our tight end has a wide nine technique. His rule is on or outside. And he's gonna try to reach that guy. Tackle knows a five technique is the problem technique. And so he's not going to run past him. As he takes off, the uh, defensive uh, man on him skates down the line of scrimmage. So we get a stalemate because he can't run as fast with our tackle hanging on to him as he can without. The other thing that's going to happen is our fullback is going to take off. And what makes the yellow light sweep unique is he's trying to go outside. He sees a butt, he cuts it up. So that's a, crit a critical point is you see the butt, you cut it up for the uh, fullback. And then the sweeper does a nice job here on the whole deal as far as his approach. 
It's nice and smooth. The mesh is clean. He slide steps, gets to the outside hip of the fullback, sees green grass, and he runs. And so the key thing, again, is all those fundamentals that we, we saw on the floor with the practice uh, tape, we want to see in the game. In this case, we're getting a fake that gets immediately hit. But again, there's several people watching the back who's faking. And of course, the quarterback does a fake also. So it, there's a lot of deception. And again, the team that we're playing here has to stay quite spread out, which is to a, an advantage to us. And then, uh, we're going to go yellow light sweep. So again, our tight end is going to go out. He can't reach the um, defensive end. And so he's going to go ahead and kick him out. His fullback sees the butt, cuts it up. Takes on the lead back. And again, we have a formation where we also have a wide receiver. So that's the edge that has a tight end and a wide receiver. Uh, again, we've got a lot of things happening on the, with faking with the quarterback and the um, running back faking an option in this case. And you can see our, our lineman getting up to level two and trying to hold those linebackers because the backers are, are running, in that case, up to the top. He's actually running with the option back. So our guard has nobody to block. He kind of hesitates and then gets upfield. But again, the, idea, the ability to run um, many formations and, uh, and run in a similar place. In this clip, we have a little wrinkle in our motion where we bring them all the way across and then we turn them and run sweep back the other way. We like to do this for several reasons, just to break tendencies, and also for teams that want to try to time up the motion uh, by blitzing. But what we're doing here is we're blocking down with the tight end and tackle, and we're pulling the guard, and he's kicking out. And um, so our, our left guard, the guard at the top of the screen, is kicking out. And again, the seam is inside. We break a tackle in space, and we get a nice, nice uh, gain. The key thing here is we watch the sweeper, is he, as, as he goes past on his approach, he slide steps, gets on the outside hips, makes the cut, and runs to daylight. And again, we think we can design that to create a seam if that's what the uh, defensive structure gives us. On this play, we're going to be going into the boundary. And we're trying to, get, again, get both the tackle and the tight end reaching, hoping that the defense steps out with us and we go inside. It's not a very good job by our, our right tackle. But what I like about this is it proves a couple of fundamental points. And one of the things we want to do, and the whole premise of this, is we're going to get one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to get people in space. And if you have a good athlete like we have here, hey, that's a tough deal to try to open field tackle um, play after play. And we, we really stress the idea that we're going to get um, guys in the open. We've got to beat one guy. We keep preaching, beat one guy. Again, it's not a very good fake. Our quarterback's looking at the ball. But again, the option fake holds people just long enough that they aren't pursuing the football till right now. In fact, it's, and then it's too late. If, if we hadn't faked, then I think they could have uh, swarmed to the ball a lot better than they were able to. And again, not a very well done play on our part, in my opinion. But what, it is, what is good is that the guy that we have to beat in space, our guy beats. And, as it, and because we did everything else fairly well, we're in the end zone. Uh, hopefully those clips give you a, a general idea on, on what we're trying to do. And, um, and we certainly hope that helps you. Thank you very much. My name is Mark Speck, and I'm the head football coach at Willamette University in Salem, Oregon, uh, Division III school in the Northwest Conference. Uh, we run the fly offense and the 
topic I'm going to speak on in this film is um, about inside run or, or running uh, tackle to tackle with the fly offense. Uh, the key thing to remember is that our sweep is the main play. Our sweep is the play that is going to make everything go. But the beauty of it is, in our opinion, as soon as you start to move people out to uh, stop the sweep, or as soon as you get preoccupied with the sweep, you're going to leave something open inside. And so we want to be able to take advantage of that. And that's, how I want, that's <clears throat> excuse me, what I want to talk about in this film. Uh, I think the, the setup of this film will be a, a, a brief lecture. Uh, with some, then we'll show some drills that we do. And then we'll put some um, cut-ups at the end of this. The uh, couple points that we do that I think are important is number one, we flip-flop our line. We have a quick side and a strong side, or a weak side and a strong side, or a fast side and a quick side, or a smart side and a smarter side, or however you decide that you want to label your guys. We think it makes it much easier to put more plays in because they don't have to learn one thing as opposed to a front side rule and a back side rule. Whether or not you flip-flop your line, I don't think it's critical. I think it does help us in our practice organization. It helps us in our terminology. It helps us in, um, in identifying defenses. So it is an important part of what we do. I think the other thing that's really important about running the ball inside well is when you start talking about line splits. Our line splits are quite healthy, three, anywhere from two and a half to three feet base to uh, as big as four, even five feet. Um, the general rule in football is if you're going to run outside, you get smaller splits. If you're going to run inside, you get bigger splits. Because of the speed our sweep hits, we, can, we think we can get bigger splits because our sweeper is going to make up that extra yard between a guard and a tackle and tight end if you each took one foot larger split. We think we're going to make that speed up, or we're going to make that difference up in the speed that we hit the perimeter because we're already running and you're in a three-point stance. So I think the splits is important. Um, but by having bigger splits, it certainly helps us run inside and uh, makes people have to defend our inside run. The other thing I think is critical about the inside run for the fly offense is the timing. It is critical that you time the sweep. Everything is based off the sweep. The sweep is the play that has to be timed. If we're running a, an off a split back ISO to the side that the sweep is going, the key thing is to snap the ball so that the sweeper could have the football. We call this the mesh or the mesh drill. The key point is, uh, is whatever offense you're running, I think it works pretty well out of any backfield set, whether it be one back or two back, I don't think it works real well out of the eye formation. The offset eye is fine, and I'll show you that in a second. But to me, the, the backfield paths, the backfield plays that you already have, I don't think you have to reinvent the wheel. I think whatever you're running will probably work. All we want to do is fake the sweep first and then have the, t the, the play be run. And it's amazing what you can do with this once you start to play with it, because you can pretty much put in a, your whole running offense as is, with the exception that you would have a sweeper going through as you snap the ball. The drill we teach us with is what we call a mesh drill. The mesh drill does a lot of things for us. First thing it does, it teaches our timing, it teaches our faking, and it also teaches our backs to run their paths. And that's why we teach our backs is all running paths. And the mesh drill, as you can see here, is, um, uh, is a quarterback, a sweeper, and two running backs. We start out in a split back offense. Our, guard, our running backs, a base set, is uh, four yard, their hands are four yards behind the heels of the guard, and they're in the shoes of the guard. The bigger the splits, the more we may have them straddle the inside leg of the guards, uh, the inside leg on the guard. And basically what we want to do is we want the quarterback to fake the sweep, fake a belly, fake a counter, and then fake a, a leg, what we call a leg or a bootleg path. And so each of those cones will have a player attacking it. The sweeper will go to the far cone. The uh, belly back would be the second guy through. He'll run right by the coach. The counter back is going to take a jab step and run a counter path. And then the quarterback is going to run the, to the bootleg cone. And the, and the amazing thing about this play is that you can attack four parts of the field in a heartbeat. 
and everybody's got as good a shot as getting there as anybody else does, okay? And so I guess my point is that you do spread the field out in a very quick manner. The key point is as fast as you can say the path of the back, that's how fast they should run it. If you go sweep, belly, counter, it's going to be too slow. If I can say sweep, belly, counter, that's how fast they should run through it. And it's that simple. And, you know, my players make a lot of fun of me about sweep, belly, counter, and, uh, and how many times I say it. But that is the drill. And we want to teach the paths, which I will go over here in a little bit, but that's the faking drill that we do. And so that's what we call our mesh drill. This teaches paths, timing, and, um, and makes the guys work on their fakes. We're going to go ahead and get a sweep with the uh, sweeper. The um, number six Q, raise your hand, he's running the belly. Uh, number three Kevin's going to run the counter. And then our quarterback's going to work on his bootleg fake. The, the cones, are, are they want, we want to make sure they run to the cones because we have the ability to get the ball to all those different spots on the field. The key to, the, to this game, this little drill, is they got to fake me out, uh, the Wiley veteran. And so what they got to do is they've got to, um, I'll turn my back, the quarterback will go ahead and point to who's supposed to get the ball, I'll turn back, and I'll stand on the play side linebacker, and their job's to fake me out. Here we go. Ready. Go. Right there. Good job. And again, what we're going to try to do here is have them fake us out. The key thing is the sweep, belly, counter. As fast as you can say it, sweep, belly, counter. That's as fast as they should run through this drill. Um, any one of the four guys can get the football. And again, this is a drill that we do um, on, on, on a very regular basis, almost daily. When the facts fake, we really want them to what we call rock the baby, grab their elbow, keep their eyes up, and look. And when they make a cut, to cut away from where the football's going. Sweeper's going to put the ball on his hip, or he's going to fake like he has it on his hip, and go full speed. We'll go ahead and try one from this angle, and then we'll do one from another angle. Okay, here we go. Ready. Set, go. Good. And free. Again, the beauty of it is we got people all over the field and the ability to get the football to any of these guys. Set, go. 